Welcome to the Chasing Brighter podcast. You're about to go on a journey of self-discovery as we chase a brighter you. Every single week, we will bring you new episodes that will cover everything from lifestyle and tips to more serious conversations about grief, life, and hardships. Allow this show to be a reminder to always keep chasing a brighter version of you. Let's get into it. Hey, Kelly. How's it going? It's going well, Jess. How are you doing? Good. I have a you lot know, of things I want to talk about today. Yeah, we're in the full throes of spring, which is always, a, at least in Chicago, it's a time of like new, newness, new life, new beginnings. The because time we've been hunkering down for the an winter. Eye twitch. I have an eye twitch. It also is the time Stressful. of things get busier. Yes. Again. Like we, we have Gabby turned 16 on Thursday. Mm -hmm. And then she has a game that day. Dom has practice that day. The next day, Gabby has a game. I believe Gio has a game. And I just got a paper that says it's a spring concert. So he's been telling me verbally. Gio's one of those kids that's very aware of what's happening in the classroom and updates. So he's been telling me April 5th spring concert. No email. Nothing on the school website. No idea. And then on Friday, March 29th. Seven days before the concert, we get a paper home. There's a spring concert. I don't think seven days is an appropriate amount of time. So I'm just trying to figure out. So it's not on the calendar with. or anything? No. I, I would have to look at the school. They have a separate live calendar, but everything is supposed to be on the Cougar column. And it's not, it was not on the Cougar oh, column. Gotcha, gotcha. And I was thinking about emailing the one teacher, but I was just like... Let's have 10 things one day. So it's just so many things at a time. So anyway, I, so I've been trying really hard to take care of myself and take time. And very weirdly, I started napping last week, which maybe I'm dying what or hell? whatever, but I'm not I a love napper. It. I'm not a napper. But anyway. What kind of napper are you? Like a 20-minute power no. napper or like a no. 45 to an hour plus? Last week, I had... You were on spring break, so our my calendar was clear. And I want to say I took like a one to two hour nap. Oh, yay. Two to three days in a row. What and, is your body um, telling you? I don't know. I think I have, I diagnosed myself with chronic sinusitis, but I'm definitely like way better. So I don't know if it was that. I had that for a long I, time too. Yes. I've been working out a ton. Mm -hmm. I want to quit working out. I don't want to work out. I have days I don't care and don't want to do anything, but I still do it. And I definitely feel stronger and I'm noticing a big difference. I'm maybe like at seven weeks. Okay. Um, but I think it's important, even if you don't feel like it and you don't give it 100%, you do it anyway. I agree. I've been doing the same. It is hard. It's like you get into these modes where you're like moving and yeah. chugging and it's, yeah. you're having like a string of weeks that's great. Yeah. And then something happens and it's a week or two weeks go by and you just like completely lost your mojo for working out yeah i don't i she had burpees uh, tell me your thoughts on this you and i hate burpees okay i, I don't know who loves them honestly burpees. i think people and, do them because they know they're good for you and she was like but you know how you have different you and i love deadlift some people hate deadlift right so anyway whatever Fair enough. it was like a hit it's called a tabata i know i've heard yep. that before okay so it's rapid transitions rapid transition and it was like lift weights jumping jacks Lift weights, jumping up, like four rounds, and then another set of four rounds, another set of four rounds, and there was okay. mountain climbers in there, which honestly, I like, I like mountain yeah, climbers. Yeah, I don't mind mountain jumping climbers jacks, either. Don't hate. Yeah. Burpees, hate. And so I was like, I hate, and I, anyway. The thing about burpees are, the reason why they're the world's greatest exercise and yet the world's worst is because regardless of how you modify it, you still suck. There's no, so like, I was trying to think of, I think a modification, correct me if I'm wrong, is just like jumping back and forth and standing up instead of jumping. What about like squat thrusts, I think is when you, yeah, like the jumping, you a mountain climber, but you're just jumping in and out perhaps. Yeah. And yes. you stand up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's but what like, I did. Even that still sucks. But I did it by right. the fourth round. And I don't know people, sometimes I'm like, so my exercise on Saturday and today were the same. And I, today, I don't know, sometimes, you know, when you have your headphones on and you're like working out in public and you don't think you're in public. And I was just like, mother effer, but not saying effer, Jesus Christ. 
like to myself, but out loud. Uh, I saw the next well, exercise. You do the workout that you like, know what's coming up. Look around and I'm like, are people like, what does this woman do? That's again, to your point. No, that is people mm. are like, wow, she is working out really hard. That's mm. really amazing. I was here's the thing. What did I want, Kelly? I wanted to be drenched in sweat. I said I want to be I was drenched in sweat. And even though I don't feel like it, I did it. And I had texted the trainer like, I hate burpees. And then she was like, Do you want me to remove them from your workouts? Or is it like a love hate relationship? There's no love. It's like a hate hate relationship. <laughs> But like when I talked to Justin about it, he's like, that's why a person has a trainer, right? Because it's like they're going to make they you make do you things do you don't want to do. And so to say it was just four for 20 seconds times four. So it's 20 seconds. So I was just like telling myself, it's just 20. If she was having me do three sets of 45 seconds, I might be really pissed. But it was like 20. It was just rapid transition hit workout. So whatever anyway so i'm still chugging along did you feel good for spring break you were really working hard to feel no fit. i didn't mm-hmm. i didn't feel like i <clears throat> felt an ounce of difference in no. my body <laughs> which was frustrating but i didn't have to worry about my clothes being too big one of the things i think about is it is very slow and i do feel like i'm starting to feel changes in my body like tighter in my arms and everything mm-hmm But Justin and I have a good friend and he went to residency with her and she did one of those. I don't know if you guys have those here. We have gyms here where let's say it's like $500. But if you lose 20% of your body weight in 30 days, you get $200 back or something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very intense. Also not necessarily like maintainable and sustainable, but whatever. So her boyfriend did it and got like super cut and won this contest. And she was posting. And I think that really inspired her. And she lost all this weight. And then now her like handle is like something fit doc and super into fitness. And this was like, let's say five years ago. Mm -hmm. And she was taking selfies of like her arm like this, right? She was taking a selfie uh like this. And she took it like every day, all the time. What is that pose? Uh Holding your bicep up. Mm -hmm. And if you looked, even though she lost... I, Kelly, maybe like 100 pounds. I don't know. And then she kept taking the selfie. And if you watch over a year, two years, her arm, more sculpted, smaller. So even though she already looked amazing, she kept sculpting it. She dumped the zero that she was with. It really inspired her, changed her life. She moved across the country and is now married, living her best life. She, she like traveled around the world with doctors. It wasn't literally Doctors Without Borders, but something like that. And so I think about that all the time of her putting in the time. And if obviously... It doesn't, if you and I would start doing that, taking pictures, same pose over and over and over and over, we would probably feel incredible if you looked over a six month time period versus clothes and weight. And I remember when I had a trainer and was in the best shape of my life before kids, nothing happened for six months. And then all of a sudden I dropped 15 pounds. And it was like, you've got to build that muscle. And then your body just burns calories. It is is very true. My girlfriend, Shauna, if she's listening, when we both started CrossFitting back in our 30s-ish, she got me going on it. And she told me it took 16 weeks before she really started to see a difference. Yeah. So in theory, I was really good for two months, six to eight weeks. I'm really good and I'm expecting to see results. And so what we're saying is you got to push through that. Yeah. And I do feel great. I think when you are at that six to eight week, you realize that you feel better. You just, and when I say feel better, I don't know if I have more energy, but I just don't feel as blah. We know I I don't have more energy because I'm napping. But the other thing though, and I don't know if you've noticed this, there are days when I really don't want to work out and I'm super tired. And then I would let, just go for a walk or something. And I feel energized, like exercising energizes me. Yeah, I, I need that's why I like <clears throat> a trainer because I need I won't let her down. Yeah, you need some accountability. And I'd, so I will do yeah. the workout, even though like. Today was fine. I just have to get back in my routine because the kids have four days off of school. But I have rarely been taking two days off of working out in a row. And I did take two days off in a row Sunday, Monday, because the kids didn't have school. So it's just getting back to that. But I think like I was having like a hip 
glute issue. I don't know what it was, but I found a perfect stretch for it. Doesn't hurt anymore. Yeah, I was I th- that's like the in thing. Pain yeah. a lot. Doesn't hurt. My anymore. knees don't hurt going up right. and down the stairs. And then one of my other girlfriend was telling me, which I started doing, is I think even on those days you don't want to do any. I don't want to do anything. I started yesterday. Ended up doing more of a workout, but to just do a stretching workout, like a fifteen minute mm-hmm. stretching, because I realized Is that like what my, you did yesterday when yoga beeped up on on my when yoga beeped up, yeah. and then I was gonna do a. a peloton ride yeah and my internet it wasn't working mostly because my kids were sucking it off with their yeah. video stuff yeah. so then i ended up doing something else but yeah, yeah i did the stretching that was nice yeah. it's like a quick yoga e workout thing right can, like a... and and yeah totally and also speaking of that though was youtube youtube has a tremendous amount of resources mm-hmm. of like workouts and i things. love yoga by cassandra with a k and she has a lot of 10 and 15 minute ones so i think it's overwhelming if you see an hour one and you don't want to do a full hour yeah i think i'm we did walk on the beach we walked a mile on the beach like three i think three or four days that we were there on our vacation yeah. so that was good i was going to go to the gym i just what is it about the gym when you're on vacation why is nobody in there it was beautiful it was dark we did it uh, on one of the cruises i don't remember which cruise we went on but when they were for justin's work they were really nice like they were like it was like a celebrity cruise right so they were like really fancy cruises and the gym was like serious and they had like yoga instructors and stuff on it but i remember one cruise i went into the gym one maybe two times and then i walk on the track I think it is. We it had is interesting. To, the other, and this was uh, my other knit I'll put on my review with our resort. They had activities, like wellness activities. One was paddleboard yoga in the pool. Sounds amazing. My friend and I, we both get in line. We're waiting for it to get started. The chick in front of us was like dibs seven for like her and her friends and all of her daughters who were not in uh, line. And I, so we didn't get, we didn't get in that. It was, it filled up. And also it filled up with seven people. So I was like, what the heck? Like, why are you doing group activities during busy spring break? And you only have seven slots mm-hmm. and it's first come first serve. Yeah. Because I was over there asking where it is. And, oh, it'll be over by the pool. So I'm standing over by the pool waiting for this. All of a sudden this lady just comes on in and talks to somebody and was like in line and, mm-hmm. oh, it'll be fun. And it was like two or three of the three or four of the group, the things were teenage girls. And they're like, come on, girls. Don't you want to do this? And they're like, uh. I was like, I want to do it. I, I should have said that. I was like, I want to do it. So if you don't, that's okay. But it's my dream. I should have done that. But anyway, yeah. so that's the stuff that I think if you to... pay for a higher end resort, you're not going to have those types of things. I started listening to, speaking kind of body stuff, a client told me to read the book Body Wisdom. Okay. So I am down. starting that. I think you'd really like it. It's very chasing brighter. I'm sorry if my audible starts to play because I wanted to get the info on the book here. It is Body Wisdom by Hillary Mc. What did I say? It's not we'll put it in the show notes. I'm sorry. Okay. It's The Wisdom of Your Body okay. Finding Healing, Wholeness, and Connection Through Embodied Living. So I feel like it's a great follow up to The Body Keeps the Score. Oh, I think okay. a lot of my clients who, because of trauma, no longer feel connected to their body. I think it's a way she talks about embodiment a lot. How do you have embodied living? How do you get back in your body? And every chapter she has like conversation she wants to initiate with a friend and, and or an activity to do hmm. with someone to she had an eating disorder for a very long time. And so just talking about people who maybe don't like their body. You don't like you punish your body. You don't want to be part of your body. Just a lot of different things I think will be interesting. And another book that I'm not going to finish reading, I stopped listening to because it was going to be horrific, is called The Last Thing She Ever Did by Greg Olson. I read another Greg Olson book. So let me just tell you, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. But she took a whole bunch of Adderall and was studying. For her bar exam, she was an attorney. She was in a hurry to get there. She pulls out of the driveway, hits something. It's the neighbor's three-year-old baby. 
she grabs a baby and she's like calling for help. She her finger, she's so freaked out, her fingers aren't working. She's trying to call 911. All of a sudden she thinks, oh my God, I've had all this Adderall. They're gonna get me for this. All my hopes and dreams are dashed. And she starts carrying the baby. And I'm like, I'm out. I don't want to know what shows of the baby. A lot of his books are based on true stories. I don't want to follow up any more of it. But she does not get help for the baby. And I have a feeling she goes and buries him or hides him or does something. And it's based on a true story. It was too much for me. So I, That would be a hard pass, obviously, for me. I would quit listening. I quit listening. Because the neighbor was, like, looking for the little boy. And she, the person that was driving the car loved the little boy. She was really good friends with the neighbor. So I... I'm not reading it. <laughs> I do not like psychological fiction. Okay. That's what I've realized. So psychological thrillers, anything of that genre, I've read a couple. Um, but is that what I it's need... classified as? Yes. I looked it up. And I don't... The Woman in the Window, maybe. Woman on the Train, no. The Last Thing She Told Me, no. Sanitarium, no. Like, all the books that are in that genre that okay. people are like, those are the best he books. Read, he read... The book he I did was If You Tell. And that was based on a true story of a woman that abused the crap out of her children. But the reason I could finish it is because it starts off with the adult children. And it had said her children wanted this book written. And so I knew they were alive. I was like, okay, they're alive. So you could listen to the horrible things that happen because they're alive right now. Yes. That's so I can get through it. Yeah. But with this one, I'm like, no, because it is, it's what turns a person to make poor choices. But anyway, so that's a book I'm reading and a book I'm not reading. Did you have any good reads or are you reading anything good right now? I read three books on vacation. Wow. So I was pretty proud of myself in getting that done. The one that I really liked was Brian's Aunt Romaine. Um, love her. She gave me a stack of books, which I know I will have to promptly return to her. One of those was a psychological thriller, and I was like, mm -mm. yeah. Okay, first of all, I finished Tom Lake. Mm -hmm. Cute story. The audio mm -hmm. is narrated by Meryl Streep, which was mm -hmm. cute. It was a cute book. It's a solid four stars. Spy Coast which was, I love spies, espionage, just like a retired yeah. CIA agent yeah. thing. So I love that one. Another mystery was from Auntie Romaine, which was called Mercy Falls. It's an old mystery. The thing that's cool about it is about, it's about a sheriff, but he's Native American in like Minnesota. And it, mm. I think certain books have a, a vibe of something you yeah. like. If you read a fiction that's about art, collectors and you love art or opera yeah. or whatever those things are that it like really resonates with you but the book I'm reading right now that I haven't finished yet I, I bought it at the airport it's called the phoenix crown and it's cool because it's a joint novel by Kate Quinn who I don't know if you know a lot of her books if you've read she's much into historical fiction yeah. like the Alice Network the Rose Code the Huntress oh I read the Alice Network yeah That's yeah good book. I like some of her books so mm -hmm. she's she partnered with Janie Chang, who is another well-known author who has written things that are a little older. I haven't actually don't yeah. know. Porcelain when you Moon. discover a new author and then you deep dive into all their So books. it's cool. It's historical yeah. fiction based in San Francisco. So I started reading that. So I like, I, I think I dabble between mysteries yeah. and historical fiction. And I have a book for you I'm reading. I'm I think I'm halfway through, so I don't I know the end yet, but it's called The Lost Summers of Newport. And I know you will love it because you and I love the Gilded Age. And so it starts out present day where she's renovating this mansion and then it goes back to the family that bought it in 1899. And then so it goes to 1899, 1957, present day. So it's it stars three different women in this mansion. And so it's fascinating because in 1899, they're new money. And by the 1950s, they're like respected old money and then present day. Very so. interesting. And the house um, is by the, the breakers. So anyway. I had one of her books I started reading and I never finished. This one looks really good. And I have a weakness for anything that's like beachy. Yes. And, so, and I'm reading this one. I'm like not that. listening to it. It's been good. That's one that's been good. And I meant I don't know if you get through modes or I'm gonna mode of listening slash reading to about five books. And so I'm all over the place. But anyway, so I um, like having finished 
a couple like physical books. I yeah. forgot how much I really enjoy a physical but it's book difficult. over the audio. Yes. So I, I have the book of the month club and my current oh, book yeah. is The Mayor of Maxwell Street. Okay. Supposed to be really good. But these are big, thick, heavy, hardback books versus when I'm reading on my Kindle, then my Kindle's on my phone. So yes. I've really been trying really hard to not be on social media. Did you see that book that I got recently? I took a picture of it. I think I told you about it. Okay, so they're big, thick, heavy books, and I can't carry them around. So that's why I like a Kindle, but I love that book. It's really good. There is a new book out, and the kids are making fun of me. It is called The Generation Anxious. Oh, I did see that. Okay. Okay, here it is. Sorry. The Anxious Generation, How the Great Rewiring of Childhood is Causing an Epidemic of Mental Illness. I know I go to social media, and I know that, like, when I'm anxious or nervous or bored or whatever, I turn my phone on and go to Instagram. And so I've been really trying really hard to not go to apps and not go to Instagram. And so I've been going to my Kindle on my phone and just read. So if I'm waiting for the kids or doing something, I'm trying to just I like read. that. And I, I could be better about carrying a giant book that's like a form of self-care i feel like just figuring out ways to calm the mind i've been feeling better it's weird i know you don't i don't know i don't think you go on social media as much as i do but it's very weird because i see dominic and gabby doing it it's oh there's nothing to do let me just scroll on my phone and i just think that it's are we not creative and smart enough to do something else so anyway now i wanted to talk to you about a couple of books that are in my queue and you can tell me what you think of them one is The Fourth Wing. Are you hearing all this buzz about The Fourth Wing? It's got 185,000 reviews, oh five God. out of five stars no. on Amazon. Let me look. It's everywhere. It, Even when I was at the, I love spending time at the airport and like looking at the books. Okay. It, and also because the second one just came out, I might be making this inaccurate, but I believe, so it's going to be a series. And so a lot of people are reading it now, but the second one came out in November. The first one has been out for a while, but it's really starting to catch on now. So it came out in May. So yeah, I it think, looks familiar. So that's so one. Was it fantasy? Yes. Which I'm always on the fence about. You know it has some I, dragons in it and things. Okay. I just got, have you heard this book? Because you said fantasy and I decided to go outside my comfort for my March book club. A Fate Inked in Blood. Have not heard of it. Okay. The other book that's on my list if I see it now, I'll probably see that one. And now I'll have to read the fourth wing, but I hate when the series isn't complete and I have to wait for the next book. Then I end up reading the book before that, before the next book comes out. Yes. Yeah, so, so that well, that's what I'm interested okay. in with that one. Kristen Hanna, The Women. Did Keep you see the thing? I know. I haven't got it yet. Keep I bet you it's going to be amazing. I, I like just haven't. Hanna. So those are two big ones on my list. Did you read The Housemaid? Do you like it? Do you think I would like it? Who wrote it? Frida, Frida McFadden. Yes. Kelly, I read it in one night. I read the entire book in one night. Now, is it? And I read the You know how I said I don't like psychological? I didn't mind Verity, although it was quite a messed up book. But do you think I would? You said psychological fiction. Yes. This is psychological Well, those thriller. other books I read. Okay. But it says it's a jaw-dropping twist. So you think it. Okay. Okay. I could read psychological fiction. I don't know if I want to read psychological. My issue with that book was that it was nonfiction, psychological nonfiction. However, okay. Okay, I will try that one. I read it. So I can get anxiety if I read like a thriller book. I will get mm -hmm. a lot of anxiety. And that book, the reason I thought it was so good was because you were like WTF. I think it was one of those books, I don't remember, where it's you get totally in it, the first half. You don't realize it's the first half and it's one character. And it flips the other character and you're like WTF. So you see it from one side and you think it's this oh, one way okay. and then it's not. And so because it was just so original, okay. and it, it mustn't be that big of a book because I think I read it in two hours, three hours. Okay. So I loved it and I read the follow-up book. And I think I've read more of her books because you're just like, what the kind of hell? Lean into it. Okay. But not, no children are murdered. So I'm okay. <laughs> that's your like, that's, that's your. My that's threshold. Uh, yes. Of pain. Yes. Have you heard of any of these books? I need to deep dive. I did not pick my April books. And also, I can do audiobooks for Book of the Month. So I think I'm going to have to make these audiobooks. Oh, okay. Have you heard of Darling Girls? 
thriller, when a body turns up under their former foster home, three sisters must confront their past to keep their names clear. Romance, how to end a love story. Two writers with plenty of shared history end up staffed on the same TV show. Can they write themselves a new ending? All We Were Promised. Pre-Civil War Philadelphia brings together three Black women fighting for abolition in this emotionally riveting drama. We'll already want that one. The Wives. Movingly exploring friendship, love, and community, this memoir peers into the unique, tight-knit world of Army Wives. Ooh, that's a memoir. We like memoirs. Oh, that one came up for me. It that did. That sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. Dragon Fruit. A young adult. Hop aboard. We're embarking on a proper adventure with dragons, pirates, island myths, and epic second chances. Just, this was, a, there's a lot of books. Just for the summer, Abby Jimenez returns to a rom-com possessing all the fun of a summer fling and the emotional richness of true love. Last one. The Husband's. Not satisfied with your current husband? Just direct him back up to the attic. We'll send down a nice replacement ASAP. Interesting. The Wives, I think I read about, because it's a memoir from a person who, yeah, they move. Yeah, that one came up for me. Maybe it was just because it was a new release yeah. for well, April. Yeah, it's so interesting. My best bestie, Julie, listener right now, her wife is in the military and they have to, Julie loves Colorado and they've had to move a lot, obviously, and they have to move to Omaha. Oh, did I tell you this? yes, you did. And it's so interesting to think about that your partner, you're committing to moving your family you to all the uproot. time. Uproot, yeah. All the time. And so anyway. Interesting, on Book of the Month, I looked at the audiobooks, and the audiobooks are different because oh, some okay. of these books are so brand new that you get them early. So an audiobook, a lot of time, uh, comes out later. Uh, the Wives, for example, The Wives is coming out next week, so that would be an early release. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then cool. that other book, those sound good, too. So I got to pick out my books, but obviously we're That's crazy neat. reading, so we've been reading a lot. And the last thing I want to talk about is, you, have you heard of Mix Bar? No, tell me about it. So Gabby is just making these cute little boxes for a friend for their birthday. You buy a box. It's so cute. And then you just put little photos in it, like a magnetic closure wooden box. And you put all their little favorite things in it. And then you like close pin little pictures of them. And that's what she's doing for their birthday gift. And she was trying to figure out what their favorite things were. And one of the things I saw was like that they had little scents in them. And I was looking up at Target what ha would have a little scent. And this scent is whipped almond hair and body mist. Hair. Ooh. And they also had vanilla, but don't you love almond as much as I love almond? I like almond. No? Do you love the scent of almond? Yep. Scent of almond. This is delightful. Okay. And I thought it's something you could just keep in your car. But I think it's rare that you see a fragranced hair mist. I agree. I think that sounds intriguing. And I could see the use case for my stinky boys. Ooh, yeah. My kids all love vanilla. So your yeah. boy, I don't know if they love the vanilla. I think they like anything scented. Yeah, for the most like, part. And maybe but... you keep it and then they don't, they're not knowing that you're doing it. And then you just spray them. But I like something like that because sometimes just, especially if it lasts long when you get out of the shower, you just spray your whole self with it. Yeah, no, I'm excited about it because I do like perfume, but I just thought it was, I just thought it was cool. cool. It was something different, yeah. like a mist that's a little bit lighter than a perfume. So we'll put the link in the um, show yeah. notes. Yeah, yeah. So that, we talked a lot about books today. I, I, I hope listeners, you are looking for good reads because we really got into it today. We did. Thanks for listening today. Don't forget to subscribe so you can hear our latest episodes as soon as they drop. If you loved today's episode, share with a friend. Come visit us on Instagram or Facebook. Make sure to give us a follow. We have lots of giveaways. If you want to know more about Kelly and I, read our blogs, find more tips, tools, and resources, check that out at chasingbrighter.com. Thanks.